Well, you know, once, at least once in your life, you probably wanted to know exactly what your parents or your, or your friends were thinking. Well, there's this girl, Sophie, who found out that she can kind of do that. But she found out that it isn't necessarily that good. Hello fellow bookquesters, it is I am the bookquester, and today I got this great book, Bubbles by Abby Cooper herself, she knows exactly what you're thinking, and well, let's get right on to it. So, basically right now it's a really stressful time for our main character Sophie. Her mom and his, her mom and her boyfriend Patrick has broken up, and her mom was super depressed. And she and mom used to be adventurous girls. But Sophie really blames herself for mom losing her job and breaking up with Patrick. So basically, she blames herself and therefore she feels like she can't take any risks anymore. Then she decides, it has been a while since she had tried to be an adventurous girl. So she goes out at night alone and she goes out to spy on Patrick. <laughs> well, spy is a kind of mean term to say it, but she wanted to say, observe Patrick. Well, at first she tried to go into Patrick's house, but then he didn't answer the door, so he went, she went to see what he was doing. And he, she, she, that was when the weird stuff started. She started to see these little bubbles above people's heads, and above in those bubbles there were words. Words of what that person was thinking. Ooh, that's interesting, isn't it? And she's becoming to get worried about it, and she tells that to her mom, and her mom takes her to the doctor who says she should see a therapist. Now, let's go to school. At school, Kara, a very shy, nerdy girl, and Raphael, a funny boy, they're best friends, with, of course, Sophie. And their social studies teacher says that they need to do a risk-taking project, a very, very risky one. And Sophie, and so, Sophie, and uh, Cara and Rafa, I'm not good with names, guys. Sophie, Cara, and Rafa, they decide they're gonna do a triathlon, which is like a race where you have to do three different things, so like swimming, running, then biking, for example. And Raphael and Kara both don't know how to bike. Kara is extremely, extremely terrified of water. So, yeah, we're gonna have to train quite a little bit. But it is quite a risk, so they try it out, and they train a lot. And there's this perfect, awesome girl named Viv. And she says that she, her risk-taking project is so risky that she can't reveal it to anyone. And when Sophie looks at Viv's bubbles, Viv thinks, I sh really shouldn't have chosen this risk-taking project. And then it shifts and says, no, I can do this, I'm awesome, my life is so perfect and stuff. Wow, okay. And Viv seems to be up to absolutely no good. Perhaps, yeah, Sophie thinks, perhaps her evil plan is to make Sophie not friends with Kara and Raphael and replace her using herself? Uh, yeah, that, that's completely possible, apparently. And then another disaster strikes. Sophie forgets to hand in the triathlon forms. Therefore, they can't enter the triathlon, and her friends are super disappointed in her. But she manages to find a solution. She advertises and makes and arranges her own triathlon. I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that right, by the way. Search it up in Google. And basically, she makes her own triathlon, and Viv invites everyone, a lot of people, even their own social studies teacher and classmates and friends and all sorts of people, to the race. And they manage to do it together at the beach. And basically, everything is solved happily ever after. They find out that Viv's challenge was actually to have to get real friends. Apparently, because she was so popular, everyone around her were really shallow and they weren't really real friends with her. They were just, I guess, hangout mates, but they didn't really count as friends, or so she thought. They weren't true friends for her. So, she really wanted to be friends with Kara and Raphael. 
and why Viv couldn't approach Sophie that much was not because she was trying to disclude Sophie from the group, it was because she thought Sophie was extremely cool and she was a little bit afraid to go up and talk to her. And so basically that's why. And in the end everything works out, mom is very much less depressed and mom gets a new job and all that good stuff and it's really um i mean i love a good old happy old ending for realistic fiction but like it's fine but i feel like that for this one everything played out and everything was solved a little too perfectly i feel like it feels a little incomplete to me because even though sophie had a lot of troubles not that bad it's it's just seeing some people's thoughts and thinking different thoughts about them and getting really conflicted, but it's not really that major. And even though it's about a girl who's trying to find her own way and find herself and try to understand what the world is and stuff, even though that's kind of the point of the realistic fiction book, we're kind of left feeling a little bit incomplete and feeling like a rushed ending. That was the express impression that it left on me. It was a great book with some good uh, imagination in it, but all in all, it really just felt like a knockoff version of Sticks and Stones, so that was mostly my problem for this book. I mean, even Friends in Fiction, it had more conflict with it, I feel like, so that's what I felt, and if you think differently, comment down below, and like always, your book quester, Aaron the Book Quester, Bubbles. She knows what you're thinking. Um, creepy, but fun.